The show is brought to you by Rudus Metal Detectors, makers of the Alter 71. Discover new possibilities at rutus.com.pl. Ladies and gentlemen, it is Monday, the 14th of January, 2019. Have we gotten over the whole 2018 thing, or are you still riding it on everything that you guys do? I know I've gotten over it. It's been one hell of a year, and I can't get over what has already perspired in the first two weeks. Two weeks into the brand new year. Can you believe this? It is unbelievable. Thank you for tuning in to the Global Detection Radio Podcast, the GDA Radio Podcast. My name is Lance Goolsby. I'm talking to you from all the way across the Atlantic in Germany for those living in the United States and right next to you guys in England and everybody else. And then if you're in Australia, well, good day. I'm hoping you're having a wonderful summer in the winter times. I don't understand that. The whole flip of the earth and southern hemisphere, northern hemisphere just trips me out. I can't imagine it's the hottest time of the year down there. I'm sitting looking out my window in the studio and it is one of the wettest times of the year right outside. So I can just only imagine what it's like for 42 going down there, getting some metal detecting done and handing a a ring back to its appropriate owner. What a great thing. But anyway, thank you so much for tuning in to the Global Detection Adventures radio podcast. And for those of you who subscribe on iTunes, Thank you so much. I'm enjoying reading all the uh, reviews and the ratings. Thank you. Keep it up. Let's keep boasting me up into the, uh, you know, into the list. Wherever you happen to download the GDA Radio Podcast, make sure you stop by. Give me a rating. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a thumbs down. I don't care if you write on there on the review. Uh, I like to eat cupcakes. I don't care. It really helps. It doesn't matter what you write. It helps bump us up on the list. And it really uh, definitely, uh, you know, helps us reach more uh, people to not just sponsor, but actually more people that want to help us and help uh, provide for us. And uh, make sure you can find us on iTunes. You can find us on Spreaker. You can find us on iHeartRadio. You can find us on Spotify, wherever you happen to listen to the uh, podcast. Make sure you subscribe. Click that click button. And anytime a new episode comes out twice a week now, you will get the new episode. So make sure you do that. Anyway, I want to go ahead and uh, take this time and do some shout outs. It, 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 it's the GDA shout outs. But anyway, I want to give a shout out to Don LeClaire. Uh, you've been posting some really great stuff on here. We're going to be talking about him here in a little bit as well. But uh, also to Shane Kubat, uh, who found on his first hunt uh, this year already two wheat pennies which is really fantastic on a single hunt uh you can find him he's actually under the name the blind treasure hunter check him out that's uh, shane kubat the blind treasure hunter also on here is ron morrison who has uh, actually been detecting an 1890s park recently. Uh, Some of the finds that he found in the one hunt were absolutely unbelievable. He found uh, in a really wet area two barber halves, um, half dollars, so two barber 50 cent pieces. And then he found a third one stuck together with a older weedy. And uh, so in one hunt, he found three half dollars, which is absolutely unprecedented uh really great hunt for him good job on that ron morrison um yeah so uh good luck on the next hunts guys and if you want to uh be shouted out on the next show make sure you guys actually uh hit me up and uh make sure you keep posting on the global detection and adventures facebook group uh just come if you're not a member of it just feel free to come on over and click on the join and i personally or 42 or matt howell will bring you into the group no problems whatsoever all right so that's it if you want to shout out just make sure you do that and for now we're going to go into the crazy news of the week we're currently hovering above what must be the most unbelievable news of the week. So this week, I'm going to be going over something that I call the medical crazies. All right. So these are things that actually people did for medicinal purposes in the course of history. So uh, the Egyptians would often take a dead mouse. They wouldn't kill it. They would take a dead mouse that they would find. They would mix it with other ingredients and then basically kind of puree it all together. Uh, And then it would be added to a toothache. 
they believe that this mix would actually help with the toothache. So uh, I'm glad we're outside of those dental practices. Uh, but that's not all that a mouse was used for. Actually, during the Elizabethan period in England, a live mouse would be cut in half and then placed on top of a wart in order to get rid of a wart. That is just crazy. I couldn't even imagine that. But mice were also used for other things as well, including whooping cough, measles, curing smallpox, and curing bedwetting. Yes, children, if you are wetting your bed, it is just best you just go ahead and eat a mouse. It'll stop, trust me. Uh, I think it's actually the fact that they're afraid to eat another mouse that gets them to stop wetting the bed. But, uh, so yeah, that's not all. Uh, one of the other ones that I thought would uh, kind of interest everybody, this was an, uh, you know, this was kind of a, a mix and, in, you know, they added a whole bunch of ingredients together. This was called a powder of sim sympathy, a powder of sympathy. So in the 17th century medicine, uh, sometimes it can seem quite odd, but uh, Sir Kenlam Digby's powder of sym sympathy was quite popular at the time. Now, the powder was intended as a treatment for a very specific injury, rapier wounds. So basically, if they got into a fight with a rapier and somebody got stabbed with a rapier, this was a medicine that you would mix together in order to heal the wounds. So it was made out of earthworms, pig's brains, iron oxide, which is also rust, and bits of mummified corpses all ground into a powder. Then the powder would be applied to the weapon. <laughs> Not to the wound, it would be applied to the weapon. What they thought is that uh, by applying it to the weapon, it would cause the wound to heal itself faster based on something that was called the process of sympathetic magic. So basically, you place it onto the rapier that caused the wound, and then because of that, the magic of the healing and or whatever that they did to the rapier sword or whatever, it's a sword basically, that would cause magic to flow to the wound and cause it to heal faster. Oh, man, you got to love our, our forefathers. They really did have some crazy, crazy ideas about what <laughs> what was uh, medicinal purposes. I mean, I couldn't even imagine the whole mouse thing. That's just something that's just crazy in my head. But then again, think about it in this sense. Uh, we're talking about things that are two, three, that was the 17th century. That, so that was the 1600s. That was 400 years ago. So imagine 400 years from now, uh, how people are going to look back at us and you know, us taking aspirin, they're just going to be looking at us cross-eyed going, oh, I can't believe that he took aspirin back in the 2000s. It was just unbelievable. People are so stupid. And it's the same thing we're looking at them. I mean, it was like, um, you know, the whole thing about uh, metallurgy and everything else. Uh, uh, what was, what's it called? When they tried to turn uh, lead into gold kind of thing. <laughs> It's just, you know, that whole thing, the belief systems back then were so much different than now. But just like I said, our belief systems are going to be so much different than 400 years from now. So, I mean, uh, what can what can I say to that? You know, there's nothing I can really say to that. It's just how it is. Uh, it's crazy. I couldn't even imagine how somebody even came up with the idea of mixing pig brains, earthworms, rust, and pieces of a mummified corpse together. But, you know, good on them. I'm just glad that, you know, I wasn't around at that time to have to deal with these. And I got serious problems with leeches as well. So even in the 1800s, I would have had serious issues. But uh, that's it for the uh, wacky news. Uh, let's head on over to the GDA Find of the Week. GDA Find of the Week. Well, this week we're heading to Ontario, uh, Canada, to Toronto, to be a matter of fact. Let me let me kind of start this off again. This week we're heading to Toronto, Ontario, Canada, and uh, we're going to be talking with Dan LeClaire. Uh, Don LeClaire, excuse me, Don LeClaire, uh, but it's not him that made the found. It happened to be Ted, who I believe is Ted Z uh, Zerowell, Zerowell, 
I can't pronounce that. Zerawal. I'm butchering your name, Ted. I am so sorry. Um, that's the American in me. It's I, I just don't speak Canadian. Uh, but uh, <laughs> but anyway, uh, it happened to be uh, on one of the last videos that they were doing. Um, they were uh, talking about uh, the video itself is amazing. Treasures, coins, buttons, War of 1812, and a rare silver find for Canada. It was uploaded last Monday, January 7th. A really great video, by the way. Take a look ted is uh don is amazing in the video and he puts a, together a really good uh, uh hunt in the great white north uh seeing some of the finds that they get up there in canada is absolutely fantastic now i want to talk about the find uh because it's one of the it's one of those finds that it's actually even pretty hard down here in the united states to find because it is an 1852 Yep, 1852 American Trime. That's right, it's a three cent coin. Uh, now, uh, I'll go over a little bit about this, the uh, the history of the coin. Um, in 1851, they started it. The postage rate went down from five cents to three cents, but there was a problem. At five cents, there was a coin to pay for a stamp. At three cents, it cost three bulky large pennies. So they decided what they were going to do. Is they were going to make a three cent coin. So in uh, 1851, the first three cent coin, or what people uh, referred to as a trime, uh, came out. The U.S. minted these all the way up till 1873. Uh, so um, with uh, uh, Ted finding in 1852, really good, just a year after production, really good year. Um, I saw photos of it. You can find it on that video that I was just telling you about. It's a video that was uploaded on January 7th. Uh, find them at Canadian Diggers Metal Detecting Channel. Canadian Diggers Metal Detecting Channel. I want to play for you a, a little bit of a clip of this of when... Um, when Don was looking at the coin and he actually figured out what it was because uh, the story is, is that Ted was walking over uh, to Don who was um, digging something up and wanted to show it to Ted, but Ted found something walking over to Don who was kneeling on the ground and uh, handed it to him. Uh, Ted didn't know exactly what it was. And this is what followed. Well, hold on. If it's got stars on it, I definitely say it's American. But it's a, I think it's a trine. It's not a dime. It's not a nickel. It's I just found it like when I was walking over here. Are you freaking it's kidding me? You got a trine. United States of America, 1962. 18. You got a trine, dude. Thank you very much. <laughs> Sighting autographs at the end of the road at the end of the day. I have, I have never gotten a trine. <laughs> okay, here. You've got to hold your own trine. It's about trine I got one. <laughs> Good for you, Ted. That is absolutely fantastic. In 1852, I'm looking right at the image of it. It's got some some damage to it, but it's just kind of wild thinking of the story that that coin must have taken coming from the United States sometime between 1852 and 1873 and ending up all the way outside of Toronto, Ontario. That is such a fantastic trip, such a great find. Congratulations to you. Uh, Ted, that is actually a really, really, really great find. Hey, everybody, we're going to take a break. And I know you guys hear me talking about it all the time. Rudus.com.pl. The Ultra 71 is by far one of the greatest machines that I have ever used. It's the weapon of choice when I'm going out metal detecting from this point on. I'm going to be using it a lot this year now that my knees are all getting healed up and everything. So you're going to be seeing a lot of me using this, hopefully in videos and uploads on Facebook and YouTube. But go over to rudus.com.pl and check for yourself. This thing has 71 frequencies. And the part that I absolutely love about this, I can assign certain VDI numbers or certain ranges of a VDI number to a certain tone. So if I want the crap tones to be low and I want the really good signals to be high, I can actually assign it, personalize the tones to the way that I hunt. That is one of the greatest features that I've ever seen, and I absolutely love this. 71 frequencies, adjustable tones, dual band. It is a monster of a machine at a mid-range price. Make sure you check it out. Go to rudus.com.pl. 
<laughs> I forgot it for a second. Rudis.com.pl. That's what happens when you try to multitask while you're doing a commercial. Anyway, let's get back to the show. All right, so I just thought it'd be kind of fun going over some of the things that we need to look out for during the course of the year. Uh, some stuff that we're going to maybe have to troubleshoot, uh, which is one of the things that we kind of have to do. So this is kind of a reminder for everybody uh, once the uh, the hunting season for you starts back up. So these are the things that you're going to kind of have to start looking at in order to get ready for the year. Make sure that these are things that you have packed up, you have extras with you. So these are some of the things that we can look forward to this year as far as items that we're going to have to troubleshoot because you know, and by the way, Eddie says hi. Anyway, um, just because it's a new year doesn't mean that we shouldn't have everything packed up and ready to go. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to check our batteries before we go because the last thing that we want to uh, want to happen when we get out there is that we get out there, we turn it on, and realize that the batteries are flat. We can't have that, so we need to make sure that if you have an XP Deus, make sure you charge it up the night before. Get it ready to go. Get the coil, get the uh, uh, the receiver, and uh, get everything all charged up, ready to go. The headphones, if you have them, uh, make sure that they're all ready. Uh, if you have, um, uh, you know, detectors that use batteries. Uh, make sure that you have spare sets of the ones that you got in there if you use rechargeables. Uh, some people do like using the rechargeables. I do if I ever remember to get them charged up because they provide a more stable source of power than some of the cheaper batteries that I can get over here in Germany. But uh, make sure you charge them up at least the night before and um, get them ready. Uh, now it is a brand new year. When was the last time you took your coil cover off and made sure that there was nothing in there? Uh, if you're like me last year, I forgot to clean it after the 2017 hunting season. And once I started hunting 2018, I was getting all kinds of issues. So make sure you get it off, um, clean everything off, uh, use, um, you know, first of all, brush it all off, brush it out as much as possible, at least the cover off, uh, brush the coil off as much as possible and then use a uh, paper towel and some window cleaner just to kind of give it a once-over, make sure that everything is clean and good. Um, now, salt water is definitely going to be something that you want to get out of your coils immediately if you do but, uh, beach hunts and uh, get close to the water or even get the coil into the water. Make sure you get that water out of there because it mineralizes in there and will cause signals to go bad. So make sure you clean that up. Um, uh, now, a lot of people have issues with coils, and I know I had this last year as well. I figured, I found out that as I was swinging, I was getting all kinds of fake signals, and I couldn't figure out it for the life of me what was going on. Uh, now, thank God uh, I had GDA Ryan out there to help me out. He said, well, just switch out uh, with a new coil. I, I don't know if it's GDA Ryan. It could have been um, Dr. A as well. But uh, he said to just go ahead and switch out the coil and make sure it's not the coil. Um, I was getting really frustrated, you know, you know how it is. You're getting frustrated, signals just coming in left and right. And then you realize at one point where you, you lift the coil off the ground and you kind of move it left and right, it gives signals. So you realize something has gone awry in your coil. And I still don't know to this date exactly why. I am extremely careful with my devices. I make sure that they are carefully packed and carefully stowed. Uh, no high temperatures, no too low temperatures there in perfect places, but that does not stop technology from going bad. Uh, what had happened is that something had gotten loose in the coil uh, one of the, the pieces, don't know exactly what it was. Uh, Rudus wasn't even entirely sure themselves. I am holding it until I get in touch with them. Uh, sometime this year we're going to be actually meeting up. But uh, something had gotten loose, and it turned out uh, that... Uh, that was the only reason why it was given a false signal. As I swung, it was moving back and forth inside the coil itself. Nothing I could actually fix, and uh, it was given a false signal. So make sure that you always test your coils. If you have alternative coils, make sure you test it if you're getting some weird signals. Um, and then... Uh, Make sure that your coil is secure. Uh, you might also want to check out if your coil uses a wire. It is not a wireless like an XPDS. If it uses a wire, double check the way that you have the uh, the loop down 
where the it comes out of the coil and gets attached to the staff right at that point make sure it is not too tight because if it is too tight that will give you a false signal as well what happens is, is that something hits that coil let's say you're swinging over some low brush and uh something like a hard stick or something hits the uh the wire it's going to give a false signal make sure you add a little bit maybe a half inch of play uh on that as well plus that gives you the ability to adjust your coil without having to loosen up your cable as well uh, it's a really good thing that you need to uh, check out don't give it too much because then again that cable will bend over the coil and it will cause it to give a false signal as well so make sure you double check that one um, you'll find that nice little um, that nice little uh, soft spot, that green zone that's in the middle. Make sure that you keep it right in there. And um, if you tape, uh, I use uh, these removable, um, I guess you'd almost call it a, a bungee cord. They're made for actually holding, um, you know, like items together. It's a small loop with a ball at the end. So you just wrap it around and put... Uh, the end, the ball in through the loop, and it holds it in place. You can find them in different sizes, and it's really good on holding your coils in place, especially if you're like me, you have multiple coils. Uh, you don't have to undo tape to change it out. You can just undo two, three, or four of these uh, little bungee uh, coils or these bungee cords and just um, change out your cord, change out your coil, and then put the bungees back on. You're all done. It's a really great investment. Check it out at a hardware store or um, places that you might be able to find it. I'm not entirely sure where you can find them. I'm sure places like Walmart in the United States, Kmart, if that's even still around, um, those kind of places will have them in the sporting section. They use it for outdoor and sporting. You can use them to tie down tents on the stakes as well. Uh, they're really great to have. Um, but yeah, that's one of the things that you want to do. Like I said, make sure that, um, that your cord is not too loose or too tight. Like I said, too tight and too loose will give you false signals. Um, so make sure you double check those and, uh, make sure that, uh, you do actually not have them. Um, you'll find that green zone that's somewhere in the middle. Just kind of play around with it as you're doing it. You'll figure it out. Um, and that's it. Make sure that you uh, clean everything off. Make sure everything's ready to go. And then the most important thing that you need to make sure, you need to make sure that you're a member of the Global Detection Adventures group on Facebook. Uh, and like us. Uh, get, you know, like our page. Uh, join the group. You know, help us uh, enjoy your finds by sharing on the group. And we love taking a look at it, just like the guys from Canadian Diggers. Uh, they're sharing their videos. They're sharing their finds. We love taking a look at these. And uh, it's just so much fun. It's a really, really great thing. Um, that's it, uh, really, for the show this week. We're having a little bit of difficulty getting the new Host 42 in. I uh, hope that it's a little bit more <laughs> down back to a little bit of some kind of a disciplined show, some kind of a organized show this week. Uh, having a couple of weeks uh, where me and Digging Cow, if you don't know who Digging Cow is, that's a, a plastic cow that I found out here. Uh, metal detecting the weirdest thing that ever happened. Uh, looking for a find, a little plastic cow popped up. So that's my... That's the GDA Coin Liquors logo is this little plastic cow. But me and uh, Digger Cow were having uh, having issues trying to get uh, the show back into a semblance of order. But I think we finally got it. Thank you guys for coming in. Make sure you head on over, like I said, to Facebook and check us out at Global Detection Adventures. Click that join button. We'll bring you in. Also on Instagram, Global Detection Adventures. If you post any of your finds on Instagram, make sure you use the hashtag GDA Pod. That's G D A P O D. It will link us to your finds and we will share those things with everybody we know. If you got any questions, got anything that you want to talk about, make sure you uh, email me at gdapod at gmail.com or find me on Twitter at, at Lance Goolsby, all one word, Lance Goolsby. Uh, you'll find me on there. I want to give a last minute shout out to uh, Jacob Burr that's digging Australia on YouTube. Make sure you get over there. 
Uh, he's just posted another video. Great guy. Finally getting back into metal detecting. And then also uh, head on over uh, to Matty uh, Tomaney. <laughs> Digging Adventures on YouTube. It's Matty Tomaney. I think that's how you say it. But um, everybody knows him. It's uh, Little Matty. He's got his own talk show and everything. Really great guy. They're about to break the 1,000 subscribers on YouTube. A milestone for the duo, Matt and Matty. Uh, go over there. If you're not already a member of their group, go over there. Click that subscribe. Click that bell that's on there. Make sure you get updates every time they upload a new video. They are really great father and son metal detecting team. Uh, like I said, the Sun has his own Facebook uh, talk show. Really great show. Make sure you check them out at uh, Digging Adventures. You'll find them on YouTube. Until next week, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you so much for coming in. Make sure you leave a review. Give us a big like on wherever you subscribe to us to get our your podcast. And listen to my nasty voice in your ear holes wherever you happen to be in the work, in the car. Uh, I don't know, in prison, I don't know why you'd be there, but uh, wherever you happen to be, give us, make sure you uh, give us a big like, it really helps us out, and uh, we'll see you guys in a couple days, we'll see you out on the field, y'all, let's dig it up, alright, so the show is over, but first, as soon as you see that this show is completely done, I want you to go to rudus.com.pl. Don't order that hamburger. Don't order the chicken. Don't tell the taxi driver where you want to go. Do not start lifting those weights in the gym. I don't care if you're driving. Just hit the brakes, and this is the first thing that you need to do. Go to rudus.com.pl and check out the Alter 71. You guys are going to love this thing. Great middle range machine. One of the most powerful ones that you will find. You will love this thing. I'm not going to guarantee it, but I know that you are going to love this thing. So, first thing that you need to do right now from wherever you are, rudus.com.pl. Are you typing it in? I don't hear you typing. There you go. There you go. All right. I'll talk to you next week.